main thing they're talking about when it comes to American Idol is that controversy between Nicki Minaj and Mariah Carey. But we're going to keep it positive this morning. One question, one question. I just want to know who has the most spirit in the St. Joseph School District? <laughs> And now an update to a story we first brought to you at 5.30 tonight. A Harrison County woman is held on a quarter of a million dollar bond after being charged in the death of her infant. President Obama's adopted hometown of Chicago had a lot more young people on the streets this afternoon. Mm, there it is. Fort Lee, New Jersey has already banned texting while jaywalking, but Nevada will be the first state to implement a law that bans texting while walking. Looking for strength. Ability, yeah, speed. Yeah. Hey, next thing you know, you may see me out there on the football field. Well, Bobby be. may want to look out. Especially if some people leave camp. We <laughs> might have to put some pads on you and send you out there. I don't, I don't know. know. With all this heat, I don't know. I may have to hold back. Yeah. Justin, is it going to look like a good day for first day of camp tomorrow? I get to MC there this oh, year for one night. Looking forward to that. Anyway. Yeah, that'll be fun on stage. I always like to do that. <laughs> Coming up, Justin. Miss Simpson heard the sound of a train brush through her trailer home, and when she tried to escape, it was this same refrigerator that blocked her in her bedroom, forcing her to have to escape out of this small bedroom window. Now here's the confusing part. Frederick Boulevard Baptist Church is actually located east of 36 in Frederick, making it officially Frederick Boulevard. Yet somehow Google Maps and the post office says it's Frederick Avenue. Want to withdraw cash? There's a fee for that. Want to get a cash advance? There's a fee for that. Oh yeah. And if you're thinking of using those debit cards at an ATM machine, you guessed it, there's a fee for that. It's why some bankers say to just simply use direct deposit. The district is not overlooking recent school shootings. They're taking a proactive approach by installing a keyless entry system. Only those with access can gain entry. This new system, along with security cameras, is a positive step, but there are still parents who want to see more done. Updating a Facebook status or sending a tweet. It's a risk that most pedestrians are willing to make, but not risky enough behavior for city lawmakers to ban texting while walking. The town of Alligator is torn upside down after a possible tornado extensively damages 14 homes and several vehicles. Emergency officials say the heavy straight line winds hit the small town of a couple hundred residents around 1030 Sunday night. Dolores Simpson survived an escape scene that's made for TV. Only last night, it was all too real. Miss Simpson heard the sound of a train brush through her trailer home, and when she tried to escape, it was this same refrigerator that blocked her in her bedroom, forcing her to have to escape out of this small bedroom window. But after we got out, it was raining, and I was looking, and I looked at I said, but it's a blessing that we still alive, because we could have been dead. I was at home. Nearby neighbor Claudette Knowles also shares Miss Simpson's relief and wants to see her mother in a safer home. Safe and sound is done and over with, Lord Jesus. I'm glad so she can get in the house because these trailers are not safe. One would think a trailer home would be easily defeated by tornado style winds. This is true. It's also true for sturdy brick homes like this one that was also destroyed in the storm's path. American Red Cross's Ken McCool says aside from transitioning the victims into new homes, providing immediate assistance is their first and primary goal. We intend to try and serve some meals this afternoon out of the emergency response field. One step taken in the road to recovery. In Alligator, I'm Monica Searcy, ABC 6 News. Kathy Starr sends her grandchildren to school each day with a farewell kiss. But like many parents these days, she fears what could happen when they leave her sight. Scared. Scared to death. You know, letting your grandkids off out front in school, you're wondering if, you know, they're going to make it through the day, you know, without someone pulling something like that. It's just a scary thought. Uh, somebody came into the room and shot a teacher. That's all I know. In the wake of the Sandy Hook School massacre, parents nationwide are on edge. I, I tell you, I wouldn't know how to handle it. I really wouldn't. I, I really feel for him because I, I desperately not want to go through anything like that. It can happen here. I mean, nobody wants to think it's going to happen, but it can. St. Joseph has yet to fall victim to an on-campus shooting, but just 15 miles away, Austin Dent, 
threatened to blow up Savannah High. About it was a threat prosecutor Stephen Stevenson didn't take lightly. The 17-year-old now faces two felony counts of making a terrorist threat. We see these things happening. These are things when I was a kid in school, no, nobody would have taken them seriously. But they happen. They happen at Columbine, they happen in a theater in the past year, the school in Virginia, um, all these places. And the fact is that uh, they do happen, so you have to be prepped for them. You just can't ignore them. We can't ignore them. The school district is not overlooking recent school shootings. They're taking a proactive approach by installing a keyless entry system. Only those with access can gain entry. This new system, along with security cameras, is a positive step, but there are still parents who want to see more done. I'd like to see some armed police officers at the school. You bet. SJSD currently has four security resource officers for 23 schools. A couple more, I think, you know, because they can't be one place, you know, every place at one time. Stretched thin, they hope to increase their presence, but it all boils down to money. I really like our school resource officer program. If we could expand that to where we could have more out in the schools at some point, that would be good. A goal the school board and parents hope will keep school grounds safe. Kathy's grateful to have her grandchildren return to her for one more day. Glad I, they made it through the day and just happy to see them that they's okay. Monica Searcy, Fox 26, KNPN. All I could think of was, oh my God, I would have been right where she came in and she, I would have been dead. Eileen Burley shaken up after a car crashed into Ray's party shop this afternoon. She was right behind the counter when it all happened. And after 30 years of working for the store, she's grateful to have escaped a near-death experience. I heard a loud noise and then a crash, Light, glass flying everywhere. And then I just, I went down. I heard a loud crash and the next thing I knew I saw glass flying everywhere. Yeah, I, I don't understand. I mean, I'm not a physics professor, but I don't see how you get that much speed to do that. This is your first time ever happened. Yes, very first time. 61-year-old Letha Jensen has never had an accident to this magnitude, not even a ticket in the last 10 years. A simple trip to the grocery store turned into this. I was going to go get some popcorn. You know, I was pulling up. And my foot slipped off the gas, uh, off the brake onto the gas. It went perfectly in between the counter and the cooler. Store employee Crystal was off work, but once she got the tip from a coworker, she had to see it to believe it. Sure, and I came out here to see it and couldn't believe it. It's the kind of party no one wants to crash. Accidents happen, so maybe not of this nature, but close to it. So. Monica Searcy, Fox 26, KNPN. Thank you for watching News Press Now on Fox 26. For Nadia and myself, have a good evening. Good night.